Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, brother Radia. And assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon to everyone who's listening out there. It's great to be on this show. And this is a very good and relevant topic for each one of us. Alhamdulillah. Th thank you very much for being with us. On the Dean Show, we like to get straight down to the topic. We want to know what kind of support do we have for the new Muslims. Talk about this. All right. So let me put that uh, answer in the context, inshallah. Okay. Now, it's an obligation for all Muslims to share the message of Islam using different projects. So Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah by the different outreach programs that we have, thousands of Mus non-Muslims in this country, they have accepted Islam. They have submitted to one creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after they have submitted to Islam, a natural question that they would be asking is, what kind of support system that Muslims would provide for them in their learning more of Islam, in their practicing Islam, and in their propagating of Islam. So Alhamdulillah, we have seen that those people who are coming to Islam, they have lots of expectations. But unfortunately, not all of those expectations are met by the current uh, you know, Muslim brothers and sisters because of lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. lack of resources, and you know, so many different reasons. So what we have started in the Gain Peace Project is that to provide that support, structured support system where a new Muslim, once he or she enters Islam, they would have the complete package in which anything that they need about Islam, learning, practicing, propagating, they would have it, okay? So for that, what we have initiated is we have initiated a toll-free telephone line, which is 800-662-ISLAM. 800-662-ISLAM. So any new Muslim, or non-Muslim for that matter, could pick up a telephone any time of the day and give us a call. So if they have any questions about Islam, if they are reading the Quran or any book that they have, they could give us a call and we could clarify them or explain to them the concept in more detail. That's number one that we do. The second thing that we do and very important thing is as soon as a person accepts Islam, we give them a welcome package. This is a package to welcome them into the family of 1.5 billion people. Nice. So though now they have became, become a part of the family. Nice. They may have come from a family of four or five individuals. Now they have a family of 1.5 billion people. Alhamdulillah. So Brother Eddie, that welcome package has many, many goodies for them. Talk about some of these goodies that are in this package that the new Muslims get. All right. The best goodie that they have is indeed the guidance from God, from Allah, which is the Qur'an. Now what does this mean, Qur'an? What does it mean for somebody who's never seen this? This is the verbatim word of God, but someone said, what does it mean, Qur'an? Qur'an is the guidance which was given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and it has all the instructions, the guidance that a person has to live by. It has all the various aspects about how a person should uh, pray, how to submit to one creator, uh, you know, how to interact with other human beings, all the do's and the don'ts that is going to bring peace in the life of a person and ultimately paradise in the hereafter. So it's an instruction manual on how a human being should live from A to Z. Everything's in there. Everything is in there. And along with this, then we have the example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So these two sources that are present in this gift package, the biography of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, along with the Qur'an itself, these are the true primary sources that we provide to a new Muslim to get them started. Nice, nice. So this Qur'an has both the Arabic part in there, it also has a translation for so, those who do not know Arabic. So this would be the actual Qur'an, what's recited here. The, er the English is not Qur'an. The English obviously is not the Qur'an. Qur'an was revealed in the language of Arabic. We have it in its original? Indeed, we have it in the original. How many versions? One. One. No, no more than one version. Unlike some other scripture, we only have one Quran. From the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so, so. up until our time. Okay. And Allah has mentioned in the Quran that he is the one who is going to protect the Quran from any change. Now, you said Allah, for those of our non-Muslim listeners, they never heard this word. They think this is some kind of 
you know, a different god, a moon god, a sun god. What do we got to say about this? Allah is the name of the creator in Arabic language, the God. So it is synonymous to the creator who created all of us, human beings, animals, sun, the moon, and the whole universe. Allah is not a tribal God. Allah is not the God of the Arabs. Allah is not, uh, you know, the moon God. Allah is the creator of the moon and the sun. So Allah is the creator, the first and the last, the sustainer, the everlasting, the immortal, never dies. The first and the last was there before the creation, would always be there after. Alhamdulillah. So that is the word, that is the name of the creator in Arabic language. Don't Jews and Christians who are Arabic speaking use the word Allah? Indeed. They are 15 million Christians and a few thousand and million Jews who are living in the Middle Eastern countries. Despite the notion that, you know, they are getting tortured and they are all of that, they are peacefully living up there. And when they have to refer to the one creator, guess what they use? They use the word Allah. Allah. In the Arabic Bible, Brother Eddie, and have a version of the Bible in Arabic, probably you do too. In the first chapter itself, in Genesis, mm -hmm. where the very first book, any time where it says that, God created the heavens and the earth, it says Allah created the heavens and the earth. All throughout the Bible it uses the word Allah. When they have to use poetry, they use the word Allah wherever the word God comes. This is in the Arabic Bible. In the Arabic, in Arabic language, the atheists, the Jews, the Christians and the Hindus, anyone who is fluent in Arabic, they use the word Allah. I wanted to hit this point, so we covered, we have the verbatim word of God, the Quran. This is, in its original, as it was revealed 1400 years ago, wasn't touched, tampered with. This is a book that everyone should look into. The first line is not according to so-and-so or so-and-so. It says, in the name of God. Look into it. It's from the creator of the heavens and the earth. We have the biography of the last and final messenger to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad. His biography, come to the source. Not somebody trying to distort his name or distort Islam. You come in to the source and it's here on the Dean Show. Let's talk about the other goodies that you have. We got two of them. You got some more in there? Well, for those brothers and sisters in Islam who have embraced Islam, maybe they're from Spanish background or Polish background or you know Russian background, they may not know English or Arabic language. So for them, we have translated the, the Quran in many different languages, 100 plus languages for that matter. So this copy of the Quran in uh, the translation is in Spanish language. And there are close to 30 million uh, people who are fluent in Spanish. They, they don't know English that fluent. So we have a copy of the Quran in different languages. So coming back to what you have mentioned that Quran is a verbatim word of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Some of you may not possess a copy of the Quran. Some of you may be curious to find out how can I and where can I get the Quran? So for those of you who are in that situation, you could pick up the telephone. They could give us a call. The number is 800-662-ISLAM, I-S-L-A-M, 800-662-ISLAM. And we'll be happy to send free of charge. Nice. So we got that goodie. All right. Then one more important tool that we give in the welcome package to our brothers and sisters who have embraced Islam is a DVD called How to Pray. Because Islam is not just lip service. Islam is not just fine, I believe in what it mentions in the Quran. Islam is about how to practice the guidance of Allah. How to live that guidance, how to interact with other human beings, and how to make the place a better place. So to start off with, this DVD, it explains the recitation in the prayer, the different motions in prayer, and how to connect with God in prayer. And it, this DVD, the contents it has, it has the prayer the way that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last messenger for humanity, the way he used to pray. Now one important aspect, Brother Eddie, about the way Muslims pray is all the prophets of God they used to pray the same way as Muslims do. Not sure if some of the viewers 
we are aware of that fact. Before we pray, we have to wash ourselves, right? Yes. And we have to make the intention. Then we have to stand facing a certain direction, and we face the direction of Mecca, Kaaba, mm -hmm. right? We have the holiest of shrine up there. Then we have certain motions, and then we prostrate on the ground, and we pray to Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So all the prophets of God, there were 124,000 prophets and messengers. They used to pray the same way as Muslims do. This is something uh, beautiful. You got this DVD on prayer. You're taking the action, showing your obedience and love towards your Creator. Dial up directly, not through any intermediary. Nope. Direct dial up to your Creator five times a day. Now you can pray. You know, there's other voluntary prayer. You can supplicate at any time. Because sure. I've had people ask me, what, you can only pray at fixed times? Yeah, you pray at the fixed times, but you can supplicate in your car, you know, when you're uh, in an airplane, wherever we have those supplications. But this is the, the prayers that is incumbent on every Muslim to do five times a day. Yeah, there are five formal prayers. And they're supposed to be prayed the way that God has guided us to pray as. Besides that, right now I could pray, Oh God, guide all of us on the straight path. So we could be better human beings and bring peace and uh, harmony to the society. That's a prayer. Amen. Amen. So now we go on from the goodies that we have. When you accept Islam, you get these goodies so you can continue on your uh, quest, seeking knowledge, continuing your education, because it's key. Islam is based not on just faith. We have faith because you can't see God. You can't see the angels. You can't see those messengers. So you need faith but it's knowledge-based faith. It's rational. It makes sense. It's not something mystical out there, weird. It makes sense logically, and it's based on faith and rationale going together. It's a beautiful thing. So now, yeah. So we have the, the support package. You wanted to mention something, a note on this, and then we can go to the next uh, point of the support system that the new Muslims get. Yes. So a brother or sister who embrace Islam, they may, be have, they may be having lots of expectations. Okay? One of the expectations would be, fine, I'm going to accept Islam, I may have all the books, but what if I have questions? What if I need uh, a Muslim brother or sister who could guide me into how to pray, to correct my recitation, and to uh, give me more information about Islam? So for those individuals, alhamdulillah, all praise be to God, we have a system called the buddy system, or the mentoring system. So as soon as a person accepts Islam, we assigned a knowledgeable brother or sister as the mentor of that new Muslim. Okay? So the job of that mentor is to make sure that this new Muslim brother or sister, they are performing the way that they're supposed to perform according to Allah, according to God. That they know how to pray, that they know the recitation, they know the memorization. If they have any misconceptions about some things that they're reading, they would clarify it right away. So it's like a guardian angel standing next to them 24-7, something of that nature. This is beautiful. And you know this is one of the unique things about Islam. You're watching the Dean Show. We're talking about Islam and helping you understand Muslims. Islam simply means surrender and submission to the Creator, one God alone, and then achieving peace. That's why all, this is something that we're all seeking and Islam gives you Dr. Sabil this is unique that you don't have to have no guesswork it's like when you join a company you get hired for a position they give you maybe a uniform to wear they give you all the different things that you have to do God has given you the blueprint no guesswork who God is he defines himself in the Quran we don't have to have your opinion my opinion and we got all this confusion God tells you who he is what your purpose in life is where you're going when you die, and this is something that we can all agree on, we will all die. We will all leave this earth. And God tells you in this book where you're going from there. It's a beautiful thing. Everything is there. Let's go to the next thing. You got. We talked about uh, the package. We talked about the uh, mentoring, uh, somebody supporting you, being there for you. What's the next thing that we got support? Well, alhamdulillah. With? the Gain Peace Project. We also would like to make sure that our new Muslim brothers and sisters, they get formal education. That means we have created university-type classrooms okay, with different levels from freshmen all the way to, suppose, masters. Maybe we could go higher with PhD. Okay? So we have formal classes for our new Muslim brothers and sisters 
where they could physically come, take the class, interact with other new Muslims. So they could build the bonding, take the classes, answer or ask any question to the teacher, and intermingle with other people. So we have these classes in two different locations. Okay. One of them is in Chicago. The second one is in Villa Park Islamic Foundation. The third class which we have is in online internet class. So any person up there from a mosque, a masjid, or any Muslim would like to duplicate the project that we are doing about the mentoring process and the support system that we have, they could contact us. Just pick up the telephone, 800-662-ISLAM. We would help them in duplicating this thing in their city. The purpose is once a person becomes a Muslim, it becomes our obligation of all the Muslims to make sure that the person remains in Islam, gains the knowledge, and remains strong in Islam. Nice, nice. Yeah. This is something that is very good. We have this perfect system. You follow it. We are trying to get to paradise, and we're trying to reach out and help because, as we mentioned when we started, there are certain people that have come, taken necessary steps, but they haven't had that support, that hand that they needed to help them the rest of the way. This is the show that we're covering that is for you. Call the number if you're even thinking about accepting Islam now or you need, you know what, some of these misconceptions that you might have, there's some doubts, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Tell us, Dr. Sabil, you got these buses, they got Islam on the side. What's been the reaction? Talk about this project a little bit and the reaction from the people. Okay, very good. In the Quran, Allah, the Creator, mentions in Surah 16, verse number 125. So it's an obligation for all Muslims to share Islam, to share peace with other people, other individuals. Because we love all of humanity and we know that Islam would be good for us just like it is good for us. So we have different projects that we do all throughout the year. And one of those projects, as you have mentioned, is in the city of Chicago, we have placed ads about Islam on the sides of the buses. Okay, Maybe all of you know the city of Chicago. It's a very big city, lots of buses. And the ads are very visible. The advertisement says, Islam, you got questions? We have answers. Contact gainpeace.com or call us at 800-662-ISLAM. Then it says, free Quran and Islamic literature. So that's one segment of the ad. And on the top, it's a very unique banner that we have placed. Islam, the way of life of Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace be upon all of them. Couple points before we finish this segment of the Dean Show. There's got to be somebody out there. They might have heard something negative about Islam. They think Islam is about terrorizing people, blowing things up. They might have been flicking through the channel and heard Islam and they probably got a little nervous. They thought something's about to blow up. Let's talk about this for a second. What do we got to say about this misconception? There is a very good point that you have brought and we have to deal with that, okay? Number one, we have to realize that Muslims are human beings. Muslims are not perfect, but Islam is perfect. Since Muslims are not perfect, some Muslims may be ignorant about the teachings of Islam. Some Muslims may not have the knowledge about you know, the do's and the don'ts and how they should implement Islam. So because of their ignorance, because of the political reasons and the you know, revenge factor and all of those, some Muslims may be doing some acts of terrorism a very small segment of Muslims. However, Islam teaches no oppression of innocent people, or no oppression of anybody for that matter. Islam teaches no killing or harming any innocent person. In fact, there is a saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he mentions that in the battle, in a just war, do not kill women and children. It says in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 32, that Killing one innocent person it is as if killing all of humanity. And saving one innocent person is as if saving all of humanity. 
So brother Eddie and my dear viewers out there, that is how much Islam respects the sanctity of life. So it is very important for all of us to understand, to distinguish the religion of Islam from the actions of human beings. Human beings are not perfect. Islam is perfect. So it will not be fair for anyone to judge Islam by the actions of a few people. Just like it is not fair for Muslims to judge Christianity on the actions of a few people. When they did the Crusades, the Inquisition, the colonization, the Bosnian killing, and the apartheid, and the Ireland, and all of those things which Christians are doing, we should not attach that to the religion of Christianity. That makes perfect sense. You have to separate Islam from the actions of some Muslims. Islam teaches one thing, go to the Quran, read it in its, in its context, as Dr. Sabil, the doctor of Dawah, as I call him, was saying, Islam forbids killing innocent people, men, women, children, or anyone innocent. Battlefield is different in the conflict. There's a constitution, what you can and can't do. But still, isn't there a verse, one more, that even in the battlefield, if somebody like wants peace, look, and he's, you know, you have to take him and escort him to a safe zone? Indeed. This is something that's merciful. Right. Beyond. Indeed. Indeed, Comment Brother Eddie, it mentions in the Quran, chapter 9, verse number 6. In the context of a battle, right, in the heat of the battle, Muslims and non-Muslims are fighting in a just war. In a just war, it's very important. Even in a just war, Islam gives certain guidelines for us. And one of those guidelines is that we should not kill any innocent person, a non-combatant, non yes. number one. Number two, we cannot destroy any infrastructure, even of the enemy uh, you know, territory. We should not destroy any places of worship. We, not, we should not touch any you know, pious person who is praying, the monks and the, the priest. And on the top of it, if the enemy says peace, if they drop the weapons, we should not fight after them. We should not, you know, if they are running away, we should not go after them and shoot, you know, them, in the back shoot or them in the back. Yeah, correct. So we should also drop our weapons. So war in Islam is as a last resort after we exhaust all of diplomatic means. And even in that, Islam's beautiful guidance is, you know, you should uh, fight a war within the guidelines. No killing of innocent human beings. And the, if the enemy says peace, we should say peace and mend. That's what we're That's talking about. We're coming to a close. One more point. He's beloved to our heart. He was one of the mightiest messengers. Briefly, talk about Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him in Islam. Talk about him real briefly. We got a minute to go. Okay, very good. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is near and dear to all Muslims. And Muslim cannot be a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. Peace be upon him. We take Jesus Christ as a mighty messenger of God. We believe that he was born to Virgin Mary. We believe that he raised people from the dead by the permission of God. We believe that he healed the sick and the lepers by the permission of God. And he's a prophet of God. He submitted to one God. He invited humanity to worship one God. And he used to pray the way Muslims are praying. So when a Christian or a Jew or anyone for that matter is converting to Islam, they're not converting to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They're converting to the, the religion which was given to all the prophets. All the prophets. Indeed. That's the beauty, my dear brothers. This is something beautiful, and that's what we talked about in this show and previous shows, to worship the Creator, not His creation. Everything in the creation had a beginning. It's going to have an end. The Creator didn't have a beginning, not going to have an end. Worship Him, pray to Him, call Him, supplicate to Him. And for the new Muslims, Dr. of Dawah, Dr. Sabil has given us the support formula that's there for everybody. If you didn't accept Islam, you want to accept it, you can do it right now. What they got to say? What they got to say, Dr. Sabil? To come to Islam, God has made it very easy. We don't have any baptism ritual. We don't have a swimming pool where we take in the back and you know dip them into a pool. It's very simple. A simple recitation which should come from the heart of the person. Okay? And the translation goes like this. I bear witness that there is no other deity worthy of worship except one God, Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, 
is the messenger of Allah. That's it. Time is up. We got to go. Thank you for being with us on the Dean Show. 1-800-662-ISLAM. Call it up if you have more questions and come back every week. TheDeanShow.com. Check us out. We see you next time. God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.